All right, in our uh, eighth and final podcast from Chapter 14, we're going to learn about a process called non-disjunction. Uh, non-disjunction is when the chromosomes will not separate during meiosis. So if you can remember uh, the, the uh, Mendel's Law of Segregation, and for example, uh, we've got, uh, we'll do this with the sex chromosomes. So you have an X and a Y if you're a guy. Well, what's supposed to happen is all the cells, half of them get an X and the other half get a Y. Now that's disjunction. When you have non-disjunction, what happens is the X and the Y don't separate, and then you have the wrong number. So what we would have here is over here on this side where everything went perfectly, both of these cells are haploid. They've got 23 chromosomes, and this one over here has got 23 chromosomes. But when we have non-disjunction, you have one cell that's N plus 1, so that'll have 24 chromosomes. And then this one over here only has 22, and we call that N minus 1. And what that's going to happen is that when these gametes are used, uh, the offspring will have the wrong number of chromosomes. So let's look at the details. Okay? Sometimes during meiosis, the homologous chromosomes fail to separate. Just demonstrated that to you. And this will cause the gametes to have more or less than 23 chromosomes. So we had the N plus 1 and the N minus 1. And over here is a little bit better picture than what I drew. If non-disjunction occurs during meiosis number one, all of the four haploid cells at the end, or all the four daughter cells, will have the wrong number of chromosomes. They're supposed to have two chromosomes each. So you can see here, N plus one, it's got three. N plus one, it's also got three. And then we have an N minus one and an N minus one. If the non-disjunction occurs during meiosis number two, only half of the uh, gametes will be uh, with the wrong number of chromosomes. So for example, over here we have the non-disjunction. So we have one gamete that's N plus 1, we have another gamete that's N minus 1, and then over here on the second cell that didn't have non-disjunction, you have two perfectly good gametes. So just depends, but either way, with non-disjunction you're going to have the wrong number of chromosomes. Now, Down syndrome is caused by non-disjunction of chromosome number 21. And what happens here is one gamete had two copies of chromosome number one, and the resulting child is going to have three copies. That's called trisomy. Now trisomy, obviously, the prefix means three. Let me scroll this up here a little bit. Okay, we have some other words. All of your chromosomes, when everything works perfectly, you're going to be disomy, which means you have two chromosomes of each. When you have trisomy, obviously that's three chromosomes. Remember those ones that were N minus 1? In that case, you're going to have mono, whoops, let's spell that correctly. You're going to have monosomy, and the word mono refers to one. Okay, so there we only have one chromosome. All right, so when everything comes out perfect, your disomy, two chromosomes of each. In fact, those are really... We don't even use this word hardly because it's so obvious. Uh, but non-disjunction will result in either monosomy or trisomy. And remember, Down syndrome, trisomy 21 or Down syndrome, both of those mean the same. All right. So here we have a, a karyotype that shows you Down syndrome because there's your trisomy 21. Go ahead and write that in here for you. Okay. So... Trisomy 21. That's going on right here. And if we were to do the notation on this one, the first thing you want to do is you want to write the chromosome. You've, the chromosome number. You've got pairs of every single one of them except this one. And there's one extra. So that means you got 47. And then you list the, X, the sex chromosomes. This individual here is S, XX, so it's a girl. And then because we have 47 and our, we don't have an extra sex chromosome, then we're going to do a plus 21. So this is the notation for a female with Down syndrome, trisomy 21. Okay, remember that example I gave you at the beginning of this podcast where we looked at the wrong number of sex chromosomes? What happens when that occurs? Okay. Well, the first one that you can get is uh, Turner syndrome. Actually, let me back this up. All right. Let's draw a Punnett square and show you what happens. Okay, now let's say we had a female that's normal, but we had 
a problem with the male gametes where they, there was non-disjunction here. So half the children are going to be XXY and the other half are going to be XO. So when you are XXY, you have an extra chromosome. So those have, whoops, those have 47 chromosomes, and that's a syndrome called Kleinfelter's. Here we have XO, and that O means a zero, and in this one you only have 45 chromosomes because these were N, N, this was N plus one, and then this gamete down here was N minus one. All right, so this is how these occur. Let's learn the details about what they are. All right, Turner syndrome, also known as monosomy X, if you're to notate the karyotype, it's 45X, and usually there's actually a zero written right in there. And this occurs in 1 in 2,500 females. They're typically pretty mentally normal. They're not going to have any kind of uh, mental defects. They're going to be short. They're going to have a hard time reaching 5 foot. They're going to have a web neck. We have a picture coming up that's going to show you all this. Basically what that means is that the neck is a lot wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Uh, their sex organs do not work very well because they're missing this extra chromosome, so they're not going to be able to have children. And they do often have heart problems, but those can be fixed with uh, a surgery when they're a baby. All right, so here's a picture. Whoops, I'm going too fast. Here's a picture of a female with uh, Turner syndrome. And notice she has kind of a childlike uh, appearance. This is an adult, so she doesn't have any of those secondary sex characteristics. There's the heart defect. Um, you know, none of her reproductive organs are going to work very well. Um, but really, you know, not that bad of a problem to have. All right? So if you're going to have the wrong chromosome number, um, this would be a, if you got to choose, this would be a good one to have because, you know, outside of not being able to have children, other than that, things are pretty pretty normal. Okay, the next one is Kleinfelder syndrome, uh, 47 XXY. They have an extra sex chromosome, and because they have a Y chromosome, they're a guy. Happens about one in 1,000 males. Um, they do have some kind of a mental defect, cognitive problem, learning disabilities. They're typically very very tall and slim, and because of this extra X chromosome. They could show some of the female secondary sex characteristics like breast development and widening of the hips. So here we have a picture that shows you this one. Very tall gentleman. Now, as you can see, these secondary sex characteristics that show up, those vary greatly. Uh, some men have, like, no breast development and some have a little more. But they do show some of the issues that you'll see in women. Uh, feminine fat distribution, they're going to store more fat in the hips. They also are prone to osteoporosis, which is typically an older female thing. Um, the sex organs are not as developed as they should be, so these gentlemen are going to have a hard time producing babies. All right, notice uh, they don't really need to shave, and they're not really going to have any chest hair. All right, so if you have any questions, see your teacher, and that concludes all the podcasts for this chapter.